What's up foodies? Today we're going to make a Guinness beef pie. And instead of using ground beef, we're going to be using a slow stewed oxtail. With a delicious Irish cheddar potato topping, this is an amazing dish. So let's get into it. Alright foodies, first we're going to start by cutting two onions in half. Then we're going to follow that up by dicing them. Now let's put our onions in a bowl and place them to the side. Now we're going to roughly chop three carrots. Cut the tops and bottoms off, but leave the skin. It's where most of the nutrients are. And it's going to be cooked for a long time so you won't even notice it. You're looking for about half inch size pieces for this. You want them to hold up to that long cooking time. Now let's place your carrots to the side with the onions and let's take three sprigs of rosemary. We're going to remove the leaves from the stems and give the rosemary a rough chop. Now let's take about two pounds of oxtail and give it a nice seasoning of salt. With your Dutch oven on a burner, let's set it to a medium high. Now let's add in about two tablespoons of olive oil. Carefully add your oxtail to the pot and brown on all sides. Once your oxtail is browned on all sides, let's remove it from the pan. Now let's add about another tablespoon or two of olive oil. And now we're going to saute our veggies. Let's add in our onions and carrots. And we're going to saute that for about three to four minutes. Let's add a pinch of salt to this to help extract the moisture. All right, let's go ahead and add in three cloves of garlic. Let's crush it in. You could have minced this beforehand, but I have a garlic crusher. Feel free to crush it in as well. Now let's saute that for about a minute and then we're going to add in our rosemary. Let's give that a quick stir. Now let's add in 45 grams of all-purpose flour. And this is what's going to help thicken our stew. We're kind of making a roux here by adding the flour to the oil in the pan already. And if you don't know what a roux is, it's a mixture of equal parts flour and butter or oil. Now we're going to cook our flour for a couple of minutes to help remove that raw flour taste and to help it to become one with the oil. Now it's time for my favorite part. Let's crack open a Guinness beer. Now you could drink this Guinness beer, but it's going to be served better in our stew. So if you want to have some beer, go ahead and crack one for yourself as well. Let's go ahead and pour that whole can in. Yep, the whole can. I mean, if you want to take a little sip for yourself, go right ahead. No one's going to know. Now let's go ahead and give that a good mix. Now that our Guinness is starting to thicken, we're going to add in about 750 mils of whole tomatoes. Now you can't crush them you want beforehand with your hands or with a spatula, but they're going to be cooked so long they're going to break down anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Now let's go ahead and put in a few cracks of pepper. We're not going to season it with salt yet because it is going to cook down and we're going to adjust for salt at the end. Let's go ahead and add back in our oxtail and about two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire or Worcestershire or Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Whatever way you say it, let's add two tablespoons of that to it. And let's go ahead and follow it up about one liter of beef stock. Now we're going to bring this up to a boil. Placing a cover on top, we're going to place this into a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven for about two hours. And at the two hour mark, we're going to remove the lid and let it cook for another two to three hours, depending on the tenderness of the oxtail. What you're looking for is the oxtail to be falling off the bone. All right, it's been about four and a half hours. We're going to remove our lid and you're going to notice there's a bit of fat on top. What we're going to do is take a spoon and just skim that off to help remove it. We don't want this in our stew. it will make it too greasy and oily. Now, once that's removed, we're going to take out our oxtail and remove all the meat off the bones, discarding any large pieces of fat in the process. There's no one wants to bite down on a big hunk of fat, now do they? I know I don't. Once we removed all the meat from our oxtail bones, we're going to add it right back into the pot. Now we're at the point where we're going to taste for salt. We're going to add a bit of salt if it needs it. At this point, it should need quite a bit of salt as we didn't add any in the beginning of the process, as we knew it was going to cook down and we don't want a salty stew. Now we're going to pour this into a baking dish, being careful not to burn yourself. We're going to let this cool for about an hour or two. It's going to help set the base so when we pour the mashed potatoes on top, it won't just mix into the stew. Ideally, you could do this the day beforehand, put it in the fridge overnight so it's nice and firm for when you put your mashed potatoes on top. Let's go ahead and grab about three pounds of potatoes or 1400 grams. Let's go ahead and peel all our potatoes. Go ahead and cut our potatoes into cubes and place them into a pot of water. Now let's go ahead and season our pot of water with salt and bring it to a boil until our potatoes are fork tender. While our potatoes are boiling, let's go ahead and grade 400 grams of a nice Irish cheddar. And then go ahead and place that aside until our potatoes are ready. Also, we want to crack three eggs and remove the yolks. We're going to need three of those yolks to add to our mashed potatoes to help set them up when they bake in the oven. And to give them a nice richness to them, you know, as 400 grams of cheese is not going to do enough of that. All right, let's strain off our potatoes and add them to a mixing bowl. You can do this by hand or you can use KitchenAid. Of course, wipe up any spills you make while pouring them into the bowl. Now let's mash these till they're nice and creamy. Now let's add in our cheese and give that another mix. Now we're going to season for salt before we add in our egg yolks, because no one wants a good salmonella. Now once this is seasoned perfectly, let's go ahead and add in our three egg yolks and incorporate them till they're fully mixed in. And there you have it, beautiful mashed potatoes to go on top of our shepherd's pie or cottage pie. 
or oxtail pie, or whatever you want to call it. It's not a shepherd's pie, but it's not lamb, I guess. Now let's grab our cool down oxtail stew. We're going to add our mashed potatoes, little sections at a time to help evenly spread this over without, you know, trying to take all your mashed potato from one side and push it all over to the other side. I like to divide it into six different areas. Once you've added all your mashed potatoes to the top of the pie, let's go ahead and grab a spatula and evenly spread it across the top of the pie. Once it's nice and evenly spread, let's grab a fork and start making little cross sections in the pie to give it some texture when it bakes in the oven. Helps give them the little crispy spots everyone likes. Now we're going to place this into a 400 degree oven until the top is nice and golden brown. You also want to place this on top of a sheet pan just in case it spills over the edges. It's much easier to clean a sheet pan than an oven. Trust me, I've learned this the hard way. And there you have it. Oxtail pie. Look at that beauty. Now let this rest for about 15 to 20 minutes to let it set up. Then dive on in and let's give this a try. Alright, let's give this boy a try. Mm. Oh, that's like memories. Now that's some comfort food from back in Newfoundland. I guess it's uh, also Irish. My mother be proud of me for making this. She'd be like, Alan boy. That's some good shepherd's pie there. But she would call it a shepherd's pie. It's actually a cottage pie if you want to get technical. She was going to make it for me when I was back home there uh, last year. I was like, no, no, no. I got this. She liked it. It was good. Until next time. Foodie out. I lost me accent because I do too much Irish accents now. I'll give you a new fee in a minute, bye.